going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Exclusive Podcast. Appreciate you uh, tuning in. If you're new, welcome. If you're uh, returning, welcome back. Uh, I have a very special guest. I've known this woman for many years. Uh, y'all give it up for Elena G. Hello. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Now we getting busy, bridging the gap. Yes, of course. Thank you for coming on. I've uh, I've known this woman for over ten years now. Yeah, yeah. About. It's been over ten years. I think so. Yeah, because I think that you you came to like one of my first comedy shows. I think you come to some of my rap hip hop shows from like way back in the day. Oh yeah, remember those? Yeah, definitely been over ten years. Yeah, which is insane. Um, and I'm I am just. I'm beyond proud of how far you've come and how much you've done. You've completely exceeded all expectations that I ever had for you. And I never, you know, I, I, we were never like super, super close, but we were close enough to where I would keep an eye on you and I would see what you were doing and when you started and just to see where you started from and where you're at now is, is fucking amazing. So congratulations on all your success. Same to you. Same to you. (laughs) Thank you. It's been amazing. It's been, um, it's been super dope to see your success and even like both of us, because we're both at a point where we started and didn't have nothing built up from like literally the ground up is where we, where we came from. Right. For the people that don't know um, and can't really tell, uh, Elena was um, born with uh, without arms. And is there a specific term or what? what is it? Is it called or anything or is it just? Honestly, I don't know. I heard congenital something, but no one really gave me a specific term. I just say born without arms. There it is. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Straight to the point. <laughs> It's like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, literally. Good. Don't put a fucking title on you. I like yeah. that shit. So, I mean, I, I want to, I really want to like dive deep into this because it's, it's just something that's so, I guess because you were born without arms, you never really knew anything else besides that, right. you know? Um, so like, when did you really start like kind of doing stuff on your own? Like what age were you when you kind of like started like doing stuff? So I'm sure your parents would always like do stuff for you or help you out or do anything. But where, where was it a point where they started like teaching you like, okay, now you have to like kind of start doing stuff for your own. I think, um, well, probably when I started school in like kindergarten. And then I think when I started learning more about independence, probably about 10, 11 years old when I was left alone. So when mom and dad was gone, I was able to like test the waters and see what I was capable of doing or cooking on my own or like, jumping off counters and trying to make things work because my mom always, my mom's Mexican. So my mom be like, you're going to hurt yourself or something like that. And she, I think she wanted me to be independent, but I don't think she knew how it was going to be to an extent. Yeah. Oh yeah. And a Mexican mom too. That's overprotective. Overprotective as fuck. Mm -hmm. Man, that, that had to be even, even, rougher for you to like really figure out the ropes and kind of do shit on your own that's rough so kindergarten you kind of like started doing more for you like learning to do more for yourself mm-hmm. because you're going to school your parents were going to be there right. i'm sure the environment coming up like was bullying a very big big part of you growing up or were people pretty cool about it or like how I was that it was pretty chill about it and my school was a small elementary school so everybody was pretty accepting i think there was probably like two girls i probably encountered um that you know one was probably kind of jealous of the attention i was getting from it mm-hmm. another one was just kind of like you know oh she uses her feet you know and she made a comment once she was a new girl at the school i remember that was actually my fifth grade year and everybody in the class stood up to her nice. and she never came back oh she didn't go back to the school at all <laughs> i still remember her yeah <laughs> i still remember her. but yeah um middle school and high school no i never dealt with bullying i felt like everyone was pretty accepting they were just like you know she's doing her own thing like that's right. long yeah no that's awesome i'm sure a girl that never came back is probably a stripper now and has a horrible <laughs> life probably probably i feel like the bullying happens more like online than it does in school for me for myself personally yeah, well, of course, online is the fucking worst kind of people oh, because yeah. they're behind the screen and Absolutely. they aren't going to say anything to your face. They're just all on their phone and texting and all that shit. It's, right. Yeah, it's uh, I'm sure you, you, you face with uh, deal with a lot of fucking critics and, and all kind of bullshit online. Yes. 
Sure. Yeah, yeah. It's it's bullshit. They usually have like three or four followers, and you know something stupid. Or seven different accounts. Yeah. You come from yeah. And if it's on TikTok, it's like user seven eight nine three two four five six. Like, shut like the fuck I don't up, want dude. your social security card. <laughs> right. We don't need that. Yeah. No, I because I, I deal with the same shit. Like I deal with bullying, so yeah. I can only fucking mad. Like like imagine what you deal with. Yeah. Right? And I'm literally just like trying to spread laughter. Like right. what? The people are weird, dude. Mm-hmm. People are fucking weird. So I know that um, you launched your own, your own makeup brand, your own company, right? Like that, fuck, Elena. That's fucking incredible. Like that's 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 so dope. So take me into that. Like what what made you want to dive into the 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 makeup and and the fashion world? Um, honestly, when I started doing the whole makeup thing, um, I think I was in it for like about two years, and then I started learning the loopholes. And then I started working with like brands and they started teaching me about how to work and advertise. And, and I wanted to learn to be able to do that because I wanted my products the way that I like them and the quality. And I felt like I had enough following to believe in me to get to that point. And so I created something that, you know, I was happy about and I love it and still building to this day, two years later. That's amazing. That's amazing. What, um, when did you really start noticing like your your following starting to grow more and more? Because I know that now, like on Facebook, you're at like four hundred and forty seven thousand, almost four fifty thousand. Like that, that's that's insane. It's yeah. fucking dope. We just like, grew two k in like two days. Yeah, that's fucking awesome. Like what what was it that started making your following grow? Did you release something that went viral? Was it because I know you've been on the news a few times? Like I think it just depends on. Honestly, I feel like when you do a certain content, it it determines the day, the time, you know, posting something at the right moment. Because if you post something at a certain wrong time, you're not going to get those views. You're not going to get those shares. Yep. I feel like it has to be something catchy, whether it's makeup, whether I'm doing like bartending videos or the coffee videos. It has to be something catchy for it to, you know, go viral. But um, all I do is just ask people to share. You know, sharing is can get go a long way, you know. Definitely. Definitely go viral. Yeah, algorithms and, and keeping up with like times you post and mm-hmm. everything is is very crucial. I try and tell it to everybody because you really you can literally post a video and post it at like midnight on a Wednesday and you'll get like maybe a thousand, two thousand views. Right. But if you post that same video like Tuesday at like six PM, then it'll like go up to like a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand. Like it's so fucking crucial, like for when you post it, how you post it. It's um, the algorithms are, are definitely something that can take you farther and farther in your career. Exactly. So I'm, I'm happy that you, you figured all of that out. And um, for the ones who don't know, uh, Elena has a whole TikTok and Facebook, just videos where she does nothing but makes drinks. Like, I mean, you make some badass fucking looking drinks like I promise I'm not an alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> well, you make alcohol and you make like some like uh dessert type looking shit too that i've seen like the coffees and stuff yeah yeah i like i i think it happened during the pandemic i felt like i wanted to do something more than makeup during that time people were stuck at homes and they needed some entertaining and then people were trying to save money somehow so i decided to make creative drinks bartending or barista drinks and it just went viral like people love it yeah and they thank me for it because they saved a lot by just doing it at home yeah yeah no that's that, and that's amazing and i know that like um you have two kids three three okay you have three kids yeah. so i mean that uh, do, do you face challenges like even taking care of them or like do they try to take care of you or like i mean it could be both ways sometimes but i feel like it's harder especially with the younger one um she's five but the older ones they understand it um they have their days where they love it and then there's days that they don't really care for it they're like yeah mom they recognize us or mom mm-hmm. we're putting too much time into it but it's like you know it's i don't have a nine to five job it's like when i wake up to when i go to bed right it's like that's my way of my work and my income and but i, I try to get my kids involved in it so they don't feel like they're excluded and they can see the family life with my kids and how i am with my children and yeah. what's going on yeah 
No, it's, uh, I feel like they would probably, I guess some kids would want the fame and some kids wouldn't, I guess. Yeah, my son was like that at first. Like last year, he didn't want to do the social media thing. They were like, where's your son? Or I didn't even know you had a son. And now this year, he's like, now I want to do it. Like, now I'm good. I'm like, pick or choose which one you want, you know? So, right. And my daughter last year, she loved doing it. And now this year, she's like, no, but she's 14. So she's in that teenage stage where it just depends on her mood swing. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. No. And, and, you know, I feel like you have to grow into it, you know, mm -hmm. especially like at that age, like when you're, when you're younger, like you're not just going to hop on camera and just be a natural. Some people are, but I mean, most kids are, are going to be like, ah, I'm good. I don't want to be a part of it. And then they're like, you know what? I do kind of want to be a part of it. Yeah. I mean, I do it seven days a week and wow. there's days I don't feel like doing it myself, but I got to get up and just hustle and just put on a smile. What do you do seven days a week? Go live, create mm -hmm. content, or just everything? Else? Recording, doing live. So I think I do about three to four videos a day. Going live? Yes. You go to you go live three or four times a day. Yes. Wow. On TikTok and on Facebook. Wow, that is uh, that's crazy. And do you do you feel like that that makes your your following even bigger? Just yeah. going live? Uh huh. It does, and you know, it just helps with a lot of people are able to hop on at different times of day, so not everyone can hop on at once. And it just helps because not everybody wants to watch a night live or a morning live. Some people are just depends on what kind of video they want to watch that day. Right. And some people work a night shift or right. morning mm -hmm. shift. They're getting off work. They're going to work. So. Right. Yeah. No, that's um, that's great. I know some of your lives you're you're doing your makeup. Um, what are some of the other lives that you do? Um, just the bartending, uh, the coffee videos. Um, just showing them a little bit about my brands. Um, I try to show them arts and crafts, shopping with me, like things like that, like daily living, skincare. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you'll take them on the road with you and stuff like that? Yeah, or? I'll okay. just go from the car. They love road trips. They love, you know, going on field trips with me too when I'm out and about. Yeah, yeah. No, that's, that's, that's incredible. I would imagine that you have a lot of people that reach out to you kind of like with, with the same thing that uh, your condition of, of that reach out and tell you that you inspire them. Recently, yes. Um, I've actually got contacted by a girl that lived, I forgot where she lives from, but she's basically very young and she's still learning her independence. I think she's about like 23, 24 years old and she's not able to do half the stuff that I'm able to do. So I introduced her to the program that I'm now mentoring, like other people like myself, just to help them with their independence or social skills and just a confidence in themselves wow yeah that's amazing would you ever uh would you ever get into that as far as far as like doing classes and and mentoring yeah, definitely. and definitely yeah you know? mm -hmm. i did a class in october last minute they threw me under the bus so I was like hey i need you to talk for like 80 people and i was like i don't know i used to i could do it live but i never done it like in you know, front of a in crowd. In front of a crowd. It's a bit different. Totally different. But I was talking about the social media and bullying and stuff like that. And it was it was nice last minute. But they want me to do another class in two years. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. That would be super dope. Because there's, um, what's the name of that one guy um, who goes, he's like an international speaker, but he has no arms and no legs. Um, I think his name is Vic. It's Vic. I can't he starts with a V. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Nick. Nick, and then his last name starts with a V. But he's funny. I love him. He's hilarious. And, like, to, to see, especially me being a comedian, like, I, I, I can really appreciate that dude because he is funny, and he does have a lot of, like, different type of jokes in his motivational speech. And he was dealt the most crazy worst hand of yeah, life. He does. Like, you have, like, you literally have your head and your torso and like that's it that's you it. have no limbs right that's insanity to me yeah i tell people i can laugh about my issue just nobody else can do it <laughs> <laughs> right i was like yeah. but i'll catch people off guard sometimes with my comments and they'll be like for instance they'll be like oh um our daughter has long fingers long skinny fingers i wonder where she got that from I'm like obviously from you <laughs> because she didn't get that from me and they'll be like oh, i'm done with you like <laughs> i don't want to talk to you anymore bye <laughs> right right yeah, no, it's definitely one of those things where, like, you could you could make fun of it, but they can't make fun right, of it. Right, yeah. chat. that's a whole other level. Right, yeah. No, I feel like I used to do that. Um, well, actually, I didn't, actually, that's, that's a lie, because I didn't give a shit about my weight. People made fun of my weight. I would be like, ah, oh, whatever, you know, I don't really give a shit, you know? Yeah. Did you pull him up? Oh, yeah, there he is right there. There he is. Yeah. That'd be that'd be me if I lost a little bit of weight. He has the, the red hair and the red... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, nah, it's that dude is he's he's incredible, man. Like he really is. Like, um 
I, I see people like that who were just dealt bad cards in life and they just make the best of it. And yeah. to me, that's that's very beautiful. You got to make the best of the situation. Sometimes we get put in some circumstances. We can't live in the, the sadness about it. We got to look forward to the great things about it. Yeah. I always tell people, like, you have to have the will, the willpower wanting to move forward. And it's like, I'm not challenged by my limits. I like to challenge my limits, you know. No, I love that. That's mm-hmm. that's that's a beautiful way to, to vision it. No limits. Yeah, no, because if you put limits on yourself, then I mean that's you're you're putting a cap on yourself. Yeah. And literally the human body, mind, everything does not have a cap that you can do whatever the hell you want to. Whatever you put your mind to, you can do. I know it sounds so cliche. It, it, I know it does for some others, but I always feel like if you were put in a predicament, what did you want to, you know, survive and challenge yourself a little bit? Yeah. Because I get I don't know. I get annoyed with some of the questions where people are like, or answers, and they say, hey, I couldn't do that. And I was like, yeah, but wouldn't you hope that you could if you were put in that position? Like, right. Have a little faith in yourself, you know? Yeah. That's, that's very, uh, it's a very big thing that you have to do, man. Like, overcoming your mind and your thoughts are a very hard thing to do. Mm-hmm. You know, like I had um, my buddy Mike G on here. He had uh, he lost a leg in a motorcycle accident. And he had to overcome that. And that I feel like had to have been hard because you're used to having both legs your whole life. And then you lose one, you know, like that, that's fucking rough. And I'm not putting him above you or saying whose life is harder or whatever. But that to get out of that mindset has to be something that is just fucking tough to deal with. Yeah. I feel like it depends on the person. I always tell people like, for someone who had limbs and then lose them, I'm pretty sure it is more challenging because you're trying to readjust your whole life to something you were used to, to something yeah. different. Me, there was nothing to adjust to. There's just accommodating to myself. Right. Mm-hmm. Yep. I mean, you you don't know anything else besides what you know now. Yeah, there's n- there's never been a loss. Yeah. 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 But even even still to overcome like the adversity and like all the challenges and everything in your life, like that that's... It's amazing. Like yeah. it, it really is. Mm-hmm. Like it, it is. It's fucking dope. Cause I know, like any any human who was born without arms could do it. Maybe not get to where you're at, but I mean, they wouldn't know anything else, and they could just do it and kind of move out throughout life, you know. Right. But you've taken it to a whole other level. Right. With what you're doing on social media, and then the makeup brand, and I mean, when you when you launched your makeup brand and you put it out there and it was for sale. How quick did it sell out? Because I remember it sold out pretty quickly. Some sold out within like an hour. What was the feeling that went through you when when that happened? I was really surprised, actually, because I guess I had like self-doubt. Well, I think a lot of us have (laughs) self-doubt when it comes to certain situations. But yeah, I was super nervous. But every time we launch something, we always sell out. And that just shows the genuine support and the love that people... And some people don't even wear makeup. They just have it there. They're like, I just have a collection. Just put on my shelf. And I'm like, oh, thanks. Or they bought it for somebody else. But... Yeah, it just it's that genuine support just to have from other people that believed in you in yeah. your brand. Yeah. No, that's that's beautiful. What um what was the process of getting your own your own makeup like off of the ground? Like as far as like reaching out to people and, and making all of that happen? Honestly, it was a big challenge because you wanna make sure you're connecting with the right people and then you know, you're you're working with certain formulas and you don't wanna have anything go wrong and you've heard all these bad stories about certain formulas and giving allergic reactions and oh i was really really scared for those things but no it was it was pretty good once i got through it you know and i and i tried working with those same um labs and stuff so i know what kind of people i'm working with and not try to go to too many new people because you never know people are kind of sketchy yeah no they're definitely sketchy Mm -hmm. do you plan on building the uh the your, your brand up at all with the makeup yeah I'm planning on, I already have certain ideas I've been working on and then just working on like other things and accessories as well, not just makeup. Okay. Can you give us some sneak peeks or maybe behind the scenes of what you're working on or you weren't trying to keep uh, it a secret? Shades. Shades? Yeah. I, I'm I'm a dude, so I don't know what the fuck that is. I'm sunglasses. Sure that... Oh, okay. so, sunglasses. Yeah, yeah, just say sunglasses. I'm yeah. thinking of like some like eyelashes. You really are thinking or... about it. No, <laughs> no, sunglasses. Yeah. For men and women because I have a lot of men followers now. Oh, okay. Yeah. That'd be dope. Yeah. How um, so when you when you do this, and I and I wanna, I kind of wanna 
pick your brain about this for like other entrepreneurs that are trying to do this also what what avenues are you going down like how are you how are you finding people to um do the makeup do the sunglasses like are you just going online and googling and like finding no i just go through other like brands that i work with and i ask them for like references where i can go for this and that and they'll just send me what they've worked with and i get the little loophole so i got you okay yeah. so you're just kind of like networking with other people and, yeah. and figuring out we help where... each other out yeah okay i mm-hmm. got it that's super dope it's pretty uh, helpful <laughs> yeah no definitely yeah that's 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 fucking dope so you got the makeups so you have the sunglasses you're doing the lives you're building your following you've come i mean an extremely long far way from when we first met and when we first started hanging out yeah it was just a stay-at-home mom when we met yeah that's all i was doing no i wasn't even working then so yeah Two kids then i actually I, I i uh dug up a picture of um one of the first times that you and i hung out at a show yes that was at yeah can i say the location <laughs> 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 the location was on fucking East Seventh Street. Yeah. Look, works. fuck, dude. I am. I look awful. I. I, I had no lashes. I had no hair. Like I had no. <laughs> I had. A, I look like the dude from fucking Pawn Stars. The sweater that I. I got the sweater from Burlington Coat Factory. It looked like Freddy Krueger. I don't know. The facial hair is giving me a little gangster vibes going on right there. It's giving me Pawn Star vibes. That looks <laughs> awful. Like why was it so like just a strip? That's so bad. That's so bad. That's that's from 2012, by the way. Wow. 11 years now ago. Now you're pulling up pictures from the past. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was 11 years ago. It was off East 7th. I can't remember. I think it was Buckets, it was buckets. actually. It was, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. It he was... was late to his show, by the way. Was I late? Yes. I was like, where are you at, boy? I've been waiting for an hour. <laughs> oh, oh. But it's different now. No, yeah. you're on time. Yeah, you're I'm on always time. on time. Yeah. <laughs> no, fuck that. That place. That that fucking show was rough. <laughs> yeah. Was I don't sure. remember the dude. I don't remember the dude's name who put it on, but I think he had just got out of jail or some shit like wow. that. Wow. <laughs> I don't remember his fucking name for the life of me, but I remember like the um, the flyer that he put together. Was it a rap show or was it a comedy show? That I don't remember. I think it was both. I think it was a combination of both. If it was both, it was, then was a rapper, doing right? Yeah, it was a rapper who put it together for sure. And I can't remember the name for uh, for the life of me. I don't remember either. If it was a rap comedy show, then I was we were, I was literally just talking about that earlier about how I was doing like rap and comedy shows and they were fucking awful. <laughs> they were horrible. I hated those fucking things. They were rough. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm happy that we um we both came very very far. We did from that point. We really did. We came a long way, and it's crazy. It Not is. We back on it, but that's good. That just shows you growth, like how much we've came a long way, and we still got a lot more to go. Oh yeah, nah, we're not we're not done by any means. We have a very long way to go. Yeah, and it's a uh, it's a beautiful thing. This whole journey of life, you mm-hmm. know, exactly. It's um, it's great. Are you doing any collabs with anybody, or does anybody want to collab with you? Or not that I know of at the moment. I just finished my um, last collab with the the Chamoy company that I did. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I'm kind of taking a break on that one because it can get really challenging. <laughs> it can yeah. get really challenging to do all those collabs, and it's a process. It's like more than a six month process to do and to sell out as well. What's the What's the challenge? What's the most challenging part of doing the collabs? Uh, trying to get people to understand that you know, um, pricing. I think a lot of people just want to. It's like they say, like, when it's your friends and family, they always want a discount. Yeah. But it's like when it's like a a higher brand or anything, they're willing to pay the price. Mm Mm-hmm. A thousand percent. I actually, my collab that I did was with this right here. Oh, that's cool. Little Fruity Stones, my own cereal. And this was kind of a fucking nightmare, if I'm being completely honest. Like, it's cool. I'm fucking thankful for the box and everything and <laughs> um good memories and and all of that but um for this collab i mean to get this little box with like a whole bunch of different snacks it was like 50 bucks yeah 
And and they had to make it that way because they had to pay for the box. They had to get the sponsors and promoters and all that stuff. And it was it was a uh, it was a son of a bitch to do for sure. So it's um it's a lot to create something. A lot of people don't understand that it can you know it can cost. But at the end of the day, it's like you want to represent the person and just support them. And mm-hmm. it's not like it's gonna come back. <laughs> yeah, and and the thing that I found challenging with the uh, collabing is is um. Whoever you're collaborating with, if they have a high expectation of you, like you can only do so much to sell this product. Right. You know, like especially if it's, you know, so much money and and so expensive that people are like, dude, I don't have 50 bucks to fucking spend on a cereal box. And I'm like, dude, I completely understand. 100 percent. And I get that. Yeah. I think my most exciting moment for other than the Chamoy and my last collaboration was probably my eyeshadow palette. When I was able to create my eyeshadow palette, that was pretty cool. Yeah, that was fucking dope. I want to do that again. But, yeah, that was super exciting and nerve-wracking because you're trying to pick colors you you like, but you're trying to pick colors that other people would use, and you have to know what you're following. And it was pretty cool. I actually loved that process. Yeah, and, and especially, like, picking. I, I never even thought of that until you just said it out loud right now, the, picking the colors that other people would like. Mm-hmm. Because makeup, pfft, I've seen a palette, like a makeup palette of girl, like that shit's like ridiculous. Like there's right. so many different colors. But for me, I know my following at this point and I kind of know what colors they like to work with. You kind of need to know your people by mm. then. So like, going live probably helped you out a lot with, with that. Right. And now I have a better like idea of what I want next for sure. Okay. Mm-hmm. I got you. What's uh what is what is what is your following like as far as like colors and stuff? Is it more like they're like more neutrals and they're like purples and greens gotcha on that. yeah no i can't do that whole rainbow bright stuff because <laughs> not <laughs> everybody knows what to do with it <laughs> right yeah right yeah no it's um i've there's a um, there's a girl who follows me on instagram um well, we follow each other i think it's fuck, i think it's sarah sarah estrada i believe mm-hmm. and she does makeup like fucking ridiculously she has a really good following also but some of the colors that she does and that she tries to, like, match with is fucking insane. Like, fucking turquoise blue or, like, bright green or, like, mm-hmm. bright orange. I'm like, how do you... Like, it, I don't know. Like, as men, like, we don't do it. Like, we literally, like, comb our hair, put some beard oil and shit and walk out the door. <laughs> yeah. Like, maybe shoes and, like, we try and, like, you know, spruce it up that way. But as far as makeup and shit, like, that's fucking insane. I mean, I used to be like that all the time in the beginning. But I don't know. I feel like lately throughout the years, social media has been, like, kind of going down when it comes to the makeup it's kind of it's going down and then now i think it's coming back up it, mm-hmm. it has its, its things i think a lot of people are more for the tea right now yeah on social media yeah mm-hmm. gossip and cheese man all that shit oh yeah mm-hmm. I, got, I have to make up some stuff <laughs> 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 keep it going keep it interesting you gotta involve yourself in a scandal just yeah to- <laughs> i was like oh my gosh i was part of this really no i just drove past that you right know, you know right no it's uh it's crazy that's 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 another thing too is like when you do get that following, you have to constantly work to stay relevant. You gotta keep it. Yeah. And you have to stay relevant. Like, going live all the time, that's fucking great because you're constantly in front of people's eyes and you're always staying active, so they have a reason to follow you. Right. You know? But I have to be interesting in the process because if it's the same thing all the time, it get, it can get boring and I totally understand that because I would think I would be bored too. Yep. So you gotta stay relevant and just make it entertaining. It's It's rough. I mean, even, like, with my stuff, you know, like... I have the skits that I've been releasing and luckily I went super hard during the pandemic because I did like two months, two and a half months of skits nonstop Mm -hmm. and I've been able to recycle those. But at the same time, like I get too much into my head of like, fuck dude, like I'm, I'm releasing this stuff way too much and it's replay after replay, but the following is still growing and people are still loving it and commenting on it. And so it's, it's, uh, it's one of those things that like, I feel like because I did so many skits in that amount of time, like I have about maybe 60 to 70 skits. And if I just put them out, boom, 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 every once in a while, yeah. it at least keeps me relevant for the time I'm on the road and doing shows. Right. And so. that works. That, that definitely works. Mm-hmm. I feel like I get bored sometimes. So I have to like switch it up and do some comedy stuff. Yeah. Like the not my hands challenge. I did that with my daughter and <laughs> she literally drowned me with milk trying to pretend she was my hands and trying to feed me with it and <laughs> it was a whole mess but everybody loved it oh i bet yeah i haven't even heard of the nothing so it's like some oh was that like when you sit 
with your hands in your pockets and somebody's hands come out like yeah, that. Yeah, from they're like behind you. Yeah, and they're pretending, and I was like, okay, now I'm gonna get some glass of water, and then I, she drowned me with the glass, trying to oh, pour it into my mouth. It was super great. hilarious. Did but, you do that live? Yeah, I did that in the makeup one. It was a mess. Are you taking clips from your live and posting them up? Yeah, I do. Um, I've been posting them like on TikTok, and especially in like in the reels and stuff like that. Yes, it helps. Yeah. Yeah. No, definitely that helps out a lot. It's um, it's amazing. I used to do the lives quite a bit, and then I just kind of like stopped because I started like touring more and 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 doing more stuff on the right. road. Um, but I do miss them because just like the the conversation that you have with the following and it, it's always interesting especially the one, like, on one yeah especially when i was doing like the thirsty thursdays yeah during the pandemic and taking shots for like tips and donations oh my gosh i don't know how many times i got drunk on life i fell off a chair once <laughs> they were like lena you're living your best life yeah on life right in person i'm just chill <laughs> yeah <laughs> like a whole different vibe <laughs> yeah no i think i've seen you on live once when you were fucking when you were drunk Oh God! <laughs> but I, I think I don't even. Remember. I think Priscilla was with you. It's even worse. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You were pretty fucked up. Yeah. Good times. <laughs> yeah. Don't but shit, if you go live seven days a week, like you're I literally have a reason to drink. Yeah, <laughs> I do. I have a reason to drink. You're going live multiple times every single day. I hate those comments where they're like, they see me drink. Like I'll make a specific Friday night videos. And I'll be making the bartending videos. They're like, oh, my gosh. Every time I say you're always drinking, I'm like, well, then stop watching me every Friday then. Like, catch <laughs> right. me during the week when I'm not drinking. Right. Mm-hmm. They're just fucking jealous. That's yeah, all that is. They get mad. Yeah. They can't drink. Yeah. They so, got a fucking boyfriend who will get pissed off if they drink too much. I hate those. Yeah. So annoying. Stay yeah. single, guys. <laughs> Seriously. Stay single. Fucking single's the way to go. I'll tell you that. Yeah. You don't have anybody fucking nagging at you. You don't have any of that shit. Yeah. Fuck these relationships. Fuck these hoes. <laughs> Men and women hoes. Just go be a hoe. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> be careful with that, though, because, you know, there's diseases out there. Yeah, yeah. All right? You could burn when you pee. Yeah. You Saran know? wrap. Just mm. go. <laughs> Saran wrap and rubber bands. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, yeah, I know. Uh-uh. I'd rather just spend my time with my social media people and call it a day. Yeah. No, that's, that's uh, and, 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 you know, that's, I think that's such a good, like, group that you have there too because everybody supports you they love you like so you're, you're constantly surrounded by loving people regardless of the the fucking dumbasses who will comment every once in a while and just mm -hmm. bully and say stupid shit but um i feel like when you're live even if somebody does say something negative in your life all the other people are going to gang up on them oh yeah and talk shit to them oh yeah it yeah. happens a lot <laughs> yeah yeah especially recent but really mm -hmm. you're noticing it more recently yeah, I don't know. I had a stalker. I had a couple of stalkers. Really? Yeah. I don't know if you've ever had stalkers. Oh, yeah. No. You have? Mm -hmm. Okay. Definitely. Good. I'm, I'm not alone. No. No. But yeah, I had I had recently one that came out with like a couple of accounts and apparently her sister came out to me and told me that um, she was just mad because she was just saying like my feet were like disgusting and no person should be allowed to use her feet and uh, I should have bionic arms and... <laughs> um yeah and then she was just saying all these mean things and she was saying she's like the only human being like that on earth i'm like girl where have you been no shit. like i am not the only human but her sister told me he was like oh it's because her boyfriend likes girls with feet <laughs> like they uses her feet so that's why she's <laughs> jealous i'm like ah oh, that makes a lot of sense now <laughs> her dude has a foot fetish yeah i was like girl well then work on your toes then right <laughs> yeah no shit mm -hmm. mm. take some pointers from me you might keep your man right <laughs> Don't let, don't let them come around me. True mm -hmm. player for real. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Oh, fuck that. That's, uh, yeah, it's crazy. I, I, like, I don't, I've never gotten the foot fetish thing. Like the dudes who have foot either. fetish. I don't understand it. But I'm sure you're their fucking dream woman. That's. <laughs> they I would know. be banking right now. <laughs> like, fuck yeah. Yeah. You can do OnlyFans feet pics. People make shit ton of money. A lot of people have been telling me that, but I'm like really scared. I'm like, what am I supposed to do? They're like, pose. I'm like, what? <laughs> like, what kind of pose are we doing? Like, I don't understand. You can literally put your feet. I mean, they'll know it's you because of your tattoos, but. I was thinking about putting like foundation coverage. <laughs> I'm mean, like, oh, that's not me. That's yeah. my doppelganger. <laughs> right, right. You just find me in Hawaii somewhere sticking like picks in the sand and stuff yeah you could probably you'll probably make a killing off of that shit for real for real most likely no i've had i've had stalkers for sure um 
fuck man i don't know if he's gonna listen to this episode if he does i'm probably dead um but there was a time uh i'll leave <laughs> i'll leave the location just out of it but um there's a time I was doing a show and this dude, he'd been following me for a while and I always try and like keep up with people. I always try and reply and talk to people, you know? Um, but he had been telling me like he had been going to shows. He's like, dude, I was, I'm going to go to your Miami show tonight. Mm-hmm. I'm like, Oh dope dude. I'll, I'll see you there. And then like after the show, he'd be like, Hey man, I wasn't able to say what's up because I had something to, I had something to do. Duh, duh, duh. And the line for merch was like ridiculously long. Miami, I had like 50 people and the line wasn't that long. Mm-hmm. So I was like, this motherfucker didn't go to the Miami show. And he would keep saying that like, Hey, I'm going to go to your show in Chicago tonight. Or, Hey, I'm going to sh- go to your show in New York tonight. I'm out here for business and I'm going to go see you. I'm going to say what's up. And dude, yeah, fuck yeah. Say what's up. Let's grab a drink afterwards, whatever, you know? Um, finally I do this show in his city and he goes to the show and, um, he's like, Hey, I'm going to pull up tonight. I'm like, cool, man. Like, I don't give a shit at this point anymore. You know, like, right. you know, whatever I do the show and he comes up to me after the show and he's like, Hey, what's up, John? I was like, Hey, what's going on? He's like, dude, he's like, I'm the one that always messages you. I was like, Oh dude, what's up, man? I was like, nice to finally meet you, man. I, like, I know we've missed each other at a lot, you know, after these other shows or whatever. Mm-hmm. And, um, he's like, Hey man, you want to go grab a drink? And I was like, yeah, dude, I'm down, whatever, you know? So like, um, he's like, there's this cool bar. I know you like old school. I know you like vintage stuff. I'm always watching your stories. And, um, he's like, there's this, there's just one bar you can go to. Like it's been there forever, dude. And I was like, all right, cool. So like we go to that bar and my manager's with me and, um, we pull up and he's already outside and he's like, Hey, what's up, dude? He's like, let me buy you a drink. I was like, all right, cool. And so like we walk in and we go into the bar with him and there's other people there from the show also. And they're like, hey, look who's here. What's up, dude? Dude, you're fucking funny. Hey, man, I'm going to get you a drink. What are you drinking? And I just told him, hey, man, give me a crown of water. And so he gets me a drink. And then the other guy who told me that he was going to, like, buy me a drink, he got, like, upset about it. Like, yeah. he was like, well, I was going to buy you a drink, but I guess these other people already got it. Like, you could tell, like, he was, like, pissed off about it. No. I was like, hey, man, like, fucking chill out. Like, it's cool, man. You get can get the next one. Yeah, like, you got the <laughs> next one. Don't worry about it. It's cool, man. And so, like, I'm sitting there and I'm talking to these people. And you can just kind of tell, like, he's getting irritated because he wanted to take me out and buy me drinks and talk to me and all this stuff. Mm-hmm. And um, me and this one dude, like, finished our conversation. He's like, hey, man, let's let's go upstairs. I want to show you these these arcades that are up here. Like, I want to show you I want to show you around. And I was like, OK. So, like, we go upstairs and like, my manager comes with us. I'm like, we're sitting there. We're playing like uh, foosball and everything. And um, when we got done, um he was like, man, he's like, I really needed this night out. He's like, I've, he said, a lot of stuff has been happening to me lately. He's like, man, I really appreciate it. He's like, can I hug you, dude? And I was like, yeah, that's cool. You know, like, I, and that, that, at that moment, I was like, this dude's really going through shit. So, like, I gave him a hug and, like, right. hugged him and shit, you know. And um, we go downstairs um, and I'm talking to those dudes. And that guy tells my manager, hey, man, can I talk to you outside real quick? And my, my manager's like, yeah, like, we'll go out there. And so, like, he goes out there and we're talking to him or whatever. And I'm in there, I'm I'm talking to these dudes, and I see my manager out there talking with him, and I'm like, hey, I was like, I think we're going to take off, I, I see my manager out here, I'm, we're, we're going to leave, because I don't know what this guy's talking about, mm-hmm. and, you know, whatever. So, like, I walk out, and when I walk out, my manager walks in, and he's like, hey, like, you, you ready to leave, you ready to go? And, like, he has, like, this look on his face, and I'm like, yeah, I was literally just going to go out there and grab you. And so, like, we go back, and I get in his car, and we're leaving, and he was like, dude, he's like, that guy was asking kind of some weird questions he's like i don't know man he seemed kind of off and i was like what are you talking about Mm -hmm. he's like well he was asking us like what hotel we were staying at and and i was like what the fuck and he was like yeah dude i didn't i didn't tell him what hotel i just told him that like we got in late and whatever and then uh the weirdest question that he asked was um are you and john staying in the same room or does he have his own separate room and i was like what i want to know that in the first place that's kind of weird exactly and I was like, look, man, I was like, on the cool, like, we pulled up to the hotel and we got out. And I was like, I'm like, dude, I'm fucking freaked out. I had just watched the Dahmer Netflix series. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so, like, I'm like, fuck, dude. Like, I, I don't want to fucking be here. I like, we should probably fucking take off. Was he want to go back? He's like, dude, he's like, I'm down to make the drive if you are. And I was like, fuck it. So we went left um, where we were and went back. And it was like a five to six hour drive to go back to where we were. Mm-hmm. And I was like, dude, let's check out early. I don't give a fuck. Well, fucking charge the rooms off it's a business right off anyway so whatever dude like we got like i really feel like if i would have stayed there that dude would have found me and chopped me up and put me in a fucking fridge and blamed it on pork chaps like i fucked that that shit was 
yeah i've dealt with a really bad situation i can't talk about it on social well on this but yeah it was pretty bad I, oh okay I so i can talk about mine but you can't talk about yours so i can die but you can't well okay. um, all right i'll say it it doesn't matter no i don't want you to die they literally, <laughs> they literally live down the street oh shit yeah <laughs> don't yeah don't talk yeah, about it then no, it's yeah. cool you're you're accessible yeah, <laughs> miles yeah. and miles away yeah no but i just it's scary how people can get that way and they can try to find your location like for instance that person thought i said i was in miami one time and they messaged me a picture of a beach but it had like hills so it kind of like hawaii like they were just showing me like i know where you're at or i'm watching or like like uh -uh. fucking google images and shit yeah google, <laughs> rock image i'm in miami we don't got that over here but right. okay that's hawaii but yeah. it's kind of scary how people can get that way yeah yeah especially with women i've noticed like men are way more fucking aggressive than than mm -hmm. women are and they start doing some creepy ass shit mm -hmm. so and i know that just from i mean and you heard my story but so i mean I, yeah, it's, no, it's, it's scary it is it can become a little obsessive yeah mm -hmm. that's why i always tell people just be careful where you tell people where you're at and locations and it's cool to mingle with viewers as well it's cool but you gotta kind of need your limitations you know where your whereabouts like i don't tell people where i'm at until after i leave right yeah yep that's how you got to do it yeah yeah because they will fucking pop up yes hey, they do. what are you doing here weird yeah, yeah okay <laughs> all right fucking creepy you didn't know <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah oh you mean it's weird that i checked in here about 20 minutes ago and now you're here cool yeah you're very weird mm -hmm. yeah people are fucking strange mm -hmm. that is fucking strange well um what uh what other things do you have like coming down the pipeline besides the the sunglasses the the makeup doing lives do you have any other things that you're working on right now no i'm just right now just doing this whole mentoring thing with the program that i work with at the moment and then hoping to go to um traveling uh to their states in a couple of months before we could do like a little bowling tournament mm -hmm. so we do a bowling tournament with people that are like amputees or born without limbs and we kind of like shut down the whole building and we do this whole tournament and we raise money. Um, we did it back in February and we raised uh, $40,000 in two days. Wow. Just because we did auctions and stuff like that. Just to help out other people that need help. And that's what I've been doing. Yeah. What well, would you do there? Be like a speaker or? Um, no, we just gather and we just bring other people around and we do the auctions and everything. And yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty chill, but it's really fun. Yeah. really fun they cover everything like they cover your food your drinks your transportation your stays like it's crazy but for us to do events like that we uh, it's the only way we'll be able to cover for yeah. other people yeah but i like it i really like it and i like getting to know other people like myself because before october i never met anybody else like myself yeah and it was it was kind of creepy i was i wasn't prepared for it because i was like oh, i'm the only person i know like myself and i remember when i met somebody in october i was sitting at a table and i was just sipping on my tea and i just looked over and i just saw a foot on the table and i was like why is somebody's foot on the table <laughs> but like i forgot like i'm only used to myself yeah so it threw me off so i understand what people think when they see me do things i thought the same thing <laughs> but now i get it I get yeah it. yeah no that's that's um that's crazy man that's that's super dope though like i think that, i think that's fucking dope what you're doing and and how you're doing it and how you're reaching out to people who are amputees and helping them through their times and mm -hmm. being motivational and inspirational for yeah. so many fucking people Elena. like i don't i don't i don't know if you have a full grasp on how many people that you're motivating and inspiring on the daily yeah you know because i mean you could like somebody could be going through something very rough and then they look at you and like man this is this girl here's just being positive as fuck mm -hmm. and living her best life doing everything that she wants and loves and i'm pissed off because i wrecked my car yesterday you know like something so minor can or yeah. something so major at a time can look so minor when they like look at your situation yeah you and know I, I think it was the same way sometimes i think that i've had my years where i, I second guess a lot of things or i didn't feel the confidence that i feel now i think that has to do with a lot of what social media it brought me up because back then i feel like i was a lot sh more shy i don't know maybe you remember i really don't but i just felt like i was i was definitely more to myself yeah and no you were you were definitely shy yeah and i feel like i just i came a long way i felt like i came a long way but it's still challenging it's still a challenge no matter what at the end of the day i just gotta 
keep moving forward and remember how what I built and keep going forward. Yeah. Now mm-hmm. that's that's literally all you can do. And I wish you nothing but success, luck Thank and you. and good fortune and I mean, of course, with me, but the thing that helps me the most is just staying close to God and continuing to move forward and praying mm-hmm. and asking for his guidance and direction. So Yeah, and staying around good people too. Mm-hmm. As long as you have people that motivate you and love on you and support you, I mean, and push you even when you don't want to get up to do it. Yes. Like, that's a that's a big help. It's a very very big key, and yes, very big tool it right is. there. Cuz I had my moments where I'm like, I don't want to do this and I just want to be by myself and I don't want nobody to know who I am, but then I'm like, girl, you did you not know how far you came along? Like, you know. Yeah. Yeah, get up. <laughs> yep. That's um with my whole journey of like eating right and working out and all that stuff uh this year, I've needed that with um my friends. Mm-hmm. You know that have been coming around and have lost weight and you know have already gone through the journey because i see them work out i'm like fuck dude i gotta keep doing this shit i gotta keep going right. you know and and being like entrepreneurs and and just having our own business or doing our own thing we constantly second guess ourselves oh yeah ultimate. you know like i mean i literally second guessed myself like last night mm-hmm. because i was me and my manager were figuring it about figuring out about um this new company who wants to start like doing promos and promotions for me and, and kind of running on that mm-hmm. aspect. And I found out how much money it was going to be. And I was like, fuck dude, like, I don't know. Like I already have this money that I'm investing with, you know, my video guy and a producer of the podcast and then mm-hmm. having the promos and like all this stuff, like the overhead cost is becoming like ridiculous. Yeah. And I like typed, I tapped out a whole email to my manager and I was like, I don't know. Like these are all the things that I'm thinking about and so much this is going to cost so much this is in the cost so we're already in the hole for this right. like what do you think what are your thoughts on this and then I woke up this morning and I was thinking about it and, and, and I don't know I really feel like I feel like God was like hey man you know who I am mm-hmm. you, you, you know you know who you worship you know who you get on your knees and pray to every single morning mm-hmm. you know what I can do you know what I've done so why are you worried about it yeah. And I literally sent my uh, an email to my manager after that long one that I read out, like wrote out. He didn't reply yet, and I was like, "Hey, man!" I was like, "Fuck it, let's do it," because I I didn't I didn't get in. I didn't quit my job to go after this career to tiptoe my way around. Right. Let's do it. If we're gonna go for broke, we're gonna go for broke. If mm. if I lose certain thing, if I lose a house, if I lose a car, it those are replaceable. Right. You know, not saying that we're going to get there, but if we do, then what what are you what are you worried about? What are you scared about, bro? Mm-hmm. You know, like you you literally took the leap of faith already. Don't tiptoe around now. Yeah. Go 110% and just make this shit happen. If it doesn't happen, cool. Pick up the pieces and move on and figure something else out. I also feel like when we go through different stages of life, like the personal lives, I think that's what also brings us down and makes us second guess ourselves as well like i think that's what i went through recently like this last five months yeah so it's like i don't know i feel like that's how i've been with my business like i was like oh should i like push it even more should i make it grow and my friends were like lena you're already here make it push it bring more stuff in and i'm like okay we'll do it i'll challenge myself at the end of the day we're flipping it so yeah yeah i think that that's um that's something that you forget about on this journey it's like how far you've come mm-hmm. you know and it's very easy and simple to to forget how far you've come yeah because just like you said like i don't know should i keep pushing like no you're already here fucker like <laughs> yeah you've made it already right definitely keep pushing but and that's something that i've learned with my stuff too is like my following the way that it's grown it's been waves Mm-hmm. like Same. i'll get boom here it is okay now we're just here we're stagnant for a while and then boom we'll move up again stagnant move up a little more stagnant and right now it's just kind of a slow it's and like steady those dry drip. spells literally literally yeah literally it yeah. is like my sex life that's exactly what it's like <laughs> it's like yeah we're relate. doing good i and can't then, relate no. i don't know what that's like no <laughs> uh, shit all right <laughs> no but yeah no i get it getting it, it in okay yeah. <laughs> foot fetishes foot jobs all right cool like, no we don't want those <laughs> just cash at me but yeah oh you're one of those girls <laughs> fucking bless my cash app <laughs> bless my cash app go ahead Ugh. no but never yeah. hear from you again we really <laughs> <laughs> you never see me again <laughs> like bye sad Mm-mm. yeah but no i think we all been through it we've all been through it yeah i know i go through it yep i'm no. trying to get my fire back 
I mean, you definitely you have the flame for sure. Yeah. You know, and just like just like me, we both got the flame. We just got to keep making sure that we're getting the wind on it and we're building the flame and building it higher and higher and, and brighter and brighter or whatever you want to say it and whatever you want to call it. But we mm-hmm. just have to keep on. The way that I say it is that we have to keep on moving and improving. Right. As long as you're moving and constantly improving, like you are fucking good. Growing pains. Literally. That's all it is. Yeah. Yep. And you just got to persevere. You persevere through that and you get on the other side of it. It's smooth sailing. Yep. You're Agreed. definitely going to run into like problems and adversity and all that. But I think the thing that's most important for us and that, that is key for us mm-hmm. as business owners, entrepreneurs, is that we have to constantly live in grace and yeah. be thankful, live with gratitude and be thankful that we're not where we're at and remember where we come from mm-hmm. and how far we've come and how much we've done to get to where we're at now. Yeah. You know, do you ever feel tired sometimes like where people are like, you're always on your phone or you're always doing this. It's like, ugh. Yes. you kind of have to have a balance somewhere. Yeah. No, definitely. Yeah. I, I feel tired physically. I feel tired mentally. There's a bunch of times I feel tired. <laughs> and people that say you're always on your phone, like, dude, like, this is my life. This, this is my is job. Literally my job. Mm-hmm. I, um, this year I've, I've incorporated Tuesdays, which is my rest day. And I have a, a flip phone that I bought. It's like 40 <coughs> bucks a month that I use. And I turn this phone off completely lose connection with everybody the number to my flip phone my immediate family members have it just in case there's an emergency i need, to, I need to know something yeah. and i completely go dark i don't talk to nobody and and i do it on tuesdays and that's when we put out the new podcast episode so like zach's on his own david's on his own my manager um zach my producer he's on his own so like they y'all figure it out yeah. and it's nerve-wracking as shit it's fucking nerve-wracking especially yeah. like especially if like um there's something that I forget to tell Zach or there's something I forget to do, but I'm just like, dude, disconnect. And I disconnect yeah. and I'll pray and I'll read my Bible. I'll watch sermons. I kind of spend time with God for a majority of the day and then I do what I want and, and kind of mm-hmm. just disconnect because I need it. Yeah, I get that. I think that's where I'm at too right now. It's just trying to find my balance like with work, being a brand owner, doing social media content, trying to be relevant yeah. and being a mom and dealing with relationships it's like it's it's a it's a mess <laughs> yeah I it's bet. a mess yeah yeah and you have to i would i would highly suggest that if if you can find a day where you can unplug and and just disconnect from everything mm-hmm. of course like the kids or whatever you can't unplug from but <laughs> just uh just disconnect and be by yourself i think that that would help you out a lot yeah no, because it sure. it helps me a lot because it resets me yeah there's so many times where like on a monday I will be like, fuck, dude, I, 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 I can't. I'm so stressed out. And then I unplug. And that Tuesday, I rest, I pray, I watch sermons, I, I kind of get in the word. And it's just like everything is back to normal. Mm-hmm. And I'm starting to, I zeroed out and now I'm good to go. And let's, let's kick this week's ass. Right. And so, Agreed. yeah, I would, I would definitely look into it for sure. Yeah, I should. Yeah. Definitely. No, it's great. Well, I uh, I, I appreciate you coming on, Elena. It's uh, it's been me. it's been great having you on. I appreciate you sharing all your stories, and I'm fucking crazily super proud of you. Same. So, um, thank you for coming on. Look into this camera right here and tell people where they can find you at. Um, you can find me on Facebook on Life of Elena G or on TikTok on Life of Elena G eighty eight. All right. Well, thank you again, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, If you like this podcast, be sure to like, subscribe, follow wherever you listen to. Uh, Until next time, we'll see y'all then. Peace. Be blessed.